there has been a rise of hate on clove species, and now we're not going to talk about my opinion on that right now, different topic for another video, but the whole clove species thing kind of gave me an idea. Why don't I do a challenge where I create and design my own cat breeds? I think that would be funsies. When I say my own breeds, I mean breeds, not species, so big cats like lynx, serval, cougar, caracal, etc. aren't allowed. The breeds I'd be creating have to be domestic cat breeds. So basically, I'm not focusing on any feral species of feline. I mean, let me know if you'd like a video like that, though. I think that'd be cool. Just one quick rule I create for myself before I start this challenge. The breeds I make have to be realistic, so no heart or smiley face pattern fur or green and pink coat or, I don't know, half fish, half cat, you get the gist. It has to be something you could see in real life and be like, yeah, that seems pretty normal. The first cat breed I worked on was a hairless subbreed of sorts. Basically, the whole explanation of this breed is that it grows fur only where its patterns are. So, for example, if a hairless cat is bred with a domestic short-haired cat that has a tabby pattern, there's a possibility this breed can emerge from that pairing and therefore would only grow fur where its strips would be. Does that make sense? I decided to name this breed half fur and drew two examples of what it would look like with dapple slash calico patterns and stripe slash tabby patterns. Since there are many more patterns among domestic short hairs, I edited some of the possibilities of what this breed could also look like as well. The next breed I created is called a Domestic River Cat. It's a smaller breed, but not quite the size of a munchkin cat. These cats are usually feral, despite what their name suggests, and reside by streams and rivers, or really any body of water. Their coats are a sandy gray, most often with marble patterns or spots. They have an especially long tail that they use to wrap themselves up to keep them warm during cold nights, although they also puff it up as a defense mechanism. Domestic river cats have sleek, thin fur, except for around their neck, which they also use to expand and make themselves appear bigger when threatened.
third cat breed is another breed of big, long-haired cats, similar to breeds like the Norwegian Forest Cat and Maine Coon, but unlike other long-haired breeds, this cat has a few traits that are distinct to their own breed, aka the uh, Nightwalker cat. <laughs> Yeah, I couldn't think of a good name for this one, I'm sorry. I know it sounds like some cringy fake cryptid, but stick with me on this. This cat breed has long, flowy, feathery fur that grows downward, so when they run, it's hard to spot their true figure since they'd usually be seen darting around from one shadowy place to another. Unlike a lot of long-haired cat breeds that are very social and calm, Nightwalker cats are known to be very skittish and untrusting. This breed prefers to be left alone and are known to be more nocturnal than other cats. Since their coats are strictly tones of dark grays and blacks, and coupled with their other traits, this breed was dubbed Nightwalker Cats. Kinda makes sense now. Oh my god. <laughs> Due to their skittish nature and habit to run and hide in dark corners when given the chance, this breed isn't very popular in cat shows or with the public in general. Most people prefer their friendlier and more social counterparts, the Maine Coon or Norwegian Forest Cats. last breed I've created is a crossbreed called the Exotic Munchkin. This is a crossbreed between a munchkin cat and a bangle. Its patterns consist of strictly rosette and spotted marbled markings like a bangle, and it has a long torso and short limbs like a munchkin cat. Because of these traits, this breed is very popular in cat shows and one of the most expensive crossbreeds of cats. <laughs> to record the coloring part of my speed paint, which is annoying because the whole point of this breed was its patterns. But here's the end result anyway. I'm sorry for getting to record it. Thanks for tuning in. Here are all the final breeds I created, and I'll catch you next time. Stop. Stop. Go away. Go away. Stop.